Hello and welcome to this channel. In this video we will talk about arterial hypertension. Arterial hypertension, also known as high blood pressure, is a common condition that affects millions of people around the world. It occurs when the force of the blood against the walls of the arteries is consistently higher than normal. A blood pressure reading of 140 over 90 or higher is considered hypertensive. The blood pressure measurement is made up of two numbers, systolic and diastolic. Systolic pressure is the force of the blood against the arteries when the heart beats. The diastolic pressure is the force of the blood against the arteries when the heart is at rest. In addition to systolic and diastolic pressure, there's another important measure of blood pressure, the mean arterial pressure. The mean arterial pressure is the average blood pressure during one heartbeat cycle. It is calculated using the following formula. Mean arterial pressure equals the diastolic pressure plus one third of the systolic pressure minus the diastolic pressure. The mean arterial pressure is a useful measure of blood pressure because it takes into account both systolic and diastolic pressure. This makes it a more accurate measure of the overall health of the patient's cardiovascular system. How do we know if the blood pressure is high? To measure the blood pressure, we will use a blood pressure cuff and a stethoscope. The blood pressure cuff should sit tightly but comfortable before we inflate it. When we manually inflate the cuff around the patient's arm, we raise the pressure until the blood flow is stopped. Then we will slowly release the pressure while listening to the patient's heartbeat with a stethoscope. The first sound we hear is the systolic pressure. The last sound we hear is the diastolic pressure. The sounds that we hear during the measurement are called Korotkov sounds. They are named after Nikolai Korotkov, a Russian physician who first described them in 1905. There are five Korotkov phases. Phase 1. The first sound is heard when the cuff pressure falls below systolic pressure. Phase 2. The sound becomes louder and more distinct. In phase 3, the sounds become softer and more muffled. And in phase 4, the sounds disappear completely. In the fifth phase, the sounds reappear as the cuff pressure falls below diastolic pressure. How do we classify hypertension? Hypertension is classified into different stages based on the blood pressure readings. The stages are first normal. The systolic pressure is below 120 mm mercury and the diastolic pressure is below 80 mm mercury. In the prehypertension stage, the systolic pressure is between 120 and 139 mm mercury and the diastolic pressure is between 80 and 89 mm mercury. In stage 1 hypertension, the systolic pressure is between 140 and 159 millimeter mercury and the diastolic pressure is between 90 and 99 millimeter mercury. In stage 2 hypertension, the systolic pressure is equal to or above 160 millimeter mercury and the diastolic pressure at or above 100 millimeter mercury. There are two main types of hypertension the primary hypertension and the secondary hypertension. Primary hypertension is the most common type of hypertension. The cause is usually unknown, but it is likely due to a combination of genetic, environmental and lifestyle factors. Secondary hypertension is a type of hypertension that is caused by an underlying medical condition, such as kidney disease, endocrine disorders or medications. There are a few other types of hypertension that we should be aware of. A commonly seen type of hypertension is the white coat hypertension. 
This type of hypertension occurs when the patient's blood pressure is high only when they are at the doctor's office. This is usually caused by the patient being nervous to be at the doctor's office. Another type is masked hypertension. This type of hypertension occurs when the patient's blood pressure is normal at the doctor's office but high at home or in other settings. So it is essentially the exact opposite of white coat hypertension. Another type of hypertension is pregnancy-induced hypertension. This type of hypertension occurs during pregnancy. If you want to know more about hypertension in pregnancy, we have a separate video on that in our gynecology playlist. The last type of hypertension is resistant hypertension. This type of hypertension is difficult to control with medication. A hypertension is said to be resistant if the use of three antihypertensives used concomitantly does not decrease the blood pressure to the desired value. What are symptoms of hypertension? Most patients will not feel any symptoms. However, if the blood pressure rises quickly or if it reaches a certain threshold, the patients might experience some symptoms, as a pounding or throbbing headache that is often worse on the top of the head, also feeling tired or worn out even after getting a good night's sleep and difficulty breathing, especially when exercising or doing strenuous activities are common symptoms. Other symptoms include frequent nosebleeds that are difficult to stop, blurred vision, or difficulty seeing at night. Some patients also experience feeling lightheaded or dizzy, especially when standing up quickly. How do we treat hypertension? Grade 1 hypertension, marked by a systolic blood pressure ranging from 140 to 159 mmHg, or a diastolic blood pressure between 90 and 99 mmHg, indicates the need for intervention. Initially, patients falling within this range are advised to focus on lifestyle modifications, such as adopting a heart-healthy diet, increasing physical activity, managing stress, and potentially losing weight if needed. This phase typically spans several months, during which consistent efforts can yield positive changes. However, if blood pressure remains uncontrolled despite these lifestyle adjustments, Medical intervention in the form of drug treatment may be introduced. Stepping up the scale, grade 2 hypertension is characterized by a systolic blood pressure reading of 160 to 179 mm mercury or a diastolic blood pressure measurement between 100 and 109 mm mercury. Similar to grade 1, patients with grade 2 hypertension are also initially encouraged to make significant lifestyle changes. These changes, which may include adjustments to diet, exercise routines and stress management, should be sustained for several weeks. Monitoring blood pressure throughout this period is essential to gauge the impact of these modifications. If lifestyle changes alone don't yield the desired results in terms of blood pressure control, doctors may consider introducing drug treatment to manage hypertension effectively. What are medications that we commonly prescribe to treat hypertension? ACE inhibitors or angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors like enalapril and lisinopril work by blocking the conversion of angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. This leads to vasodilation and reduced blood pressure. They are prescribed for conditions such as heart failure, left ventricular dysfunction, post-myocardial infarction, and diabetic nephropathy, among others. Remember, ACE inhibitors should be avoided in cases of renal artery stenosis. Angiotensin II receptor blockers, or ARBs, such as Losartan and Valsartan, also lead to vasodilation by blocking angiotensin II action. They are used for similar conditions as ACE inhibitors, and can be an alternative for those who can't tolerate ACE inhibitors or experience side effects. Beta blockers like metoprolol and atenolol 
work by reducing the effects of adrenaline and noradrenaline, leading to lowered heart rate and cardiac output. They find use in angina, heart failure, and even tachyarrhythmias. However, remember to avoid beta blockers in patients with asthma, COPD, and recent cocaine use. Calcium channel blockers come in two varieties, dehydropyridine, such as amlodipine and nifedipine, predominantly act on peripheral blood vessels, causing vasodilation. They are often preferred for isolated systolic hypertension in the elderly. Non-DHP calcium channel blockers, like verapamil and diltiazem, have more effects on the heart's conduction system. They are useful for conditions like angina and specific arrhythmias. Diuretics like thiazide diuretics and loop diuretics help by promoting increased urine production, reducing fluid volume, and subsequently lowering blood pressure. They are used in heart failure and other conditions, but can cause hypokalemia. Alpha blockers inhibit alpha adrenergic receptors, relaxing blood vessels. Centrally acting drugs reduce sympathetic nervous system activity leading to decreased vessel constriction. They play a role in lowering blood pressure too. Choosing the right medication and dosage is crucial. For mild elevation of blood pressure and low cardiovascular risk, starting with a single agent at a low dose is common. If that's not sufficient, switching agents or increasing the dose is considered. In cases of marked blood pressure elevation, or multiple risk factors, combination therapy may be initiated from the get-go. What are complications of hypertension? Hypertension can damage the arteries that supply blood to the heart. This can lead to heart attack, heart failure and arrhythmias. It can also damage the arteries that supply blood to the brain. This can lead to stroke, which is a major cause of disability and death. Hypertension can damage the blood vessels in the retina, leading to vision problems such as blurred vision, floaters and blindness. It can also damage the arteries in the legs and arms, leading to pain, numbness and weakness in the extremities. High blood pressure can damage the kidneys, leading to kidney failure and it is a major risk factor for premature death. That's it for this video, I hope it was helpful, thank you for watching and hopefully see you again in the next video.